Hello everyone. It's going to be a slightly different review. It's going to be more of an impressions um, review as opposed to a full on examination. We're going to be talking about uh, Patricia McKillop's The Riddle Master Trilogy. So we, as you can see, this is just a, a one volume. It's like an omnibus. Quite short for a trilogy. It's about 545 pages. So most of the time when I read uh, when, I, when I'm when i doing these reviews, it's usually a book that I've very recently read and completed or it's a book that I really really enjoyed and I, most of the case, most of the time uh, when, it is, when it's that sort of book it's usually about a couple of months old or maybe even a couple of years old so for example Frankenstein I read that in 2017 so it takes a little bit of time to re-familiarise re -familiarize myself with the plot and the concepts and the pros and cons and that's probably the case with this book really, I read it a couple of months ago. The, the details are still there but uh, obviously it gets a little bit foggy after a while. So it's going to be more of an impressions. And, and obviously since it's a trilogy I don't want it going too long. I think Gorman Gas was about 30 minutes. I'll try and keep this one a little bit vaguer to give just, maybe just highlight the main points. So right, I'll, I'll, I'll start off um, start off at the back of the book of course. For over 20 years, World Fantasy Award winner Patricia McKillop has captured the hearts and imaginations of uh, thousands of readers. Now at last, her renowned Riddle Master trilogy, The Riddle Master of Head, Air of Sea and Fire, and Harpist in the Wind, long out of print, is collected in one volume. In a land where wizards have long since vanished, Morgan, Prince of Head, is confronted with a challenge much different from that faced by Head's land-bound rulers before him. Although he wants only to rule and work the land of his birth, Morgan must search out a very different destiny, given to him by the stars imprinted on his forehead since he was born. He must wander strange foreign lands full of untamed magic in the form of riddling raves, mysterious harpists, a lost crown, a magical sword and an all-knowing high one who rules over all. But in his quest for a new life for himself and his people, he must face great dangers, not only to himself but to his promised bride, his land and his very way of life. So, I think that's um, a good starting off point. Some of those elements can sound a little bit cliche, and this, um, some one of the things that I was somewhat hesitant to, one of the points I was I was really hesitant to um, get into Patricia McKillop um, because of is uh, the sort of YA, the YA feel, the sort of young adult feel of this of this book, or what I perceived was a YA feel of this book. I had come across Patricia. Patricia McKillop, uh, so if you can hear the horses in the background, although I suppose for a fantasy review it's not too bad. Um, it's just horses neighing in the background. I read uh, quite a lot about Patricia McKillop on Reddit, quite a lot of recommendations and suggestions based on uh, Patricia McKillop's lyrical prose. And um, the, horse, the, horse, the horses are going crazy. Um, so despite that though, despite the lyrical prose, which I do genu generally look for in books, um, I felt this might have been a little bit uh, YA, but I was pleasantly ple pleasantly surprised. So as you can see from the background, uh, this map here is quite it's quite an interesting map. This is not the um, official map in the book. It's it's a reproduction by someone online. Um, as you can see there, we have sort of lengthwise rotation of the of the map. Um, Really quite an interesting one. Usually, I mean, it's different, different uh, layout, di different geography from what you usually see, and it's quite refreshing. I mean, there are, there is a cliche northern waste at the, in the north, but aside from that, and the Grim Grim Mountain as well. But aside from that, it's really quite, it's quite. I quite like this map actually. Um, there's not too many features, so it's not you can't really get bogged down in it, I suppose. Um, so what? So first of all, what is the book about? The book is about Morgan of Head, who is a uh, a farmer who has taken on the uh, the land rule of Head, the the island that you can see on the uh, on the map there, the little crescent shaped island of Head. So Morgan went to uh, a school for wizards uh, called Cave Nard, and he learned uh, magic. So he has a he has some of a background in in wizardry, I suppose in riddles and riddles is the main sort of concept of this book although it does fizzle out by the end and it's left purpose purposefully vague um 
So he's, he's not just Morgan of Head, the Prince of Head, is not just a simple farmer. Uh, he does have some magical elements to him. He studied at Cave Nard, and uh, there he met Rude, his uh, R O D, his friend, and then came back to uh, came back to Head to to rule the land essentially. And there are various concepts and magical elements to this book that 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 aren't since this is a, a classic fantasy book, they're not particularly uh, coherent. Which is, I do have some things to say about that, but they're not really coherent in the sense of. Uh, I don't know, Brandon Sanderson's um, magic systems, where they're very much almost scientific, will have things like the Great Shout, the power of uh, harps, we'll have uh, the significance of naming things. And so we find out that Morgan has, uh, in his past, retrieved a crown from Pevin or Peven of uh, Aum, that's how I pronounce it. Um, and a daring riddle game, which is a matter of life and death. Um, and these, this, this riddle game, these riddles in the book are, in the books, I should say, are not very. Uh, the per yeah, so they're purposely left vague. They're very, they're not defined. However, I will say first of all that riddles in the Riddle Master trilogy are not riddles that we think of when we think of riddles. They're more philosophical questions or almost life histories in a way, so someone won't say, I, I, I'm not sure, so someone won't um, give an example of uh, maybe a riddle that Gollum would say in The Hobbit, he would say, who is Peven of Aum, and, and then someone will give the stricture to that, I believe, and then that will um, inform some choice that they need to make, or something related to the plot. So it's, it, we're not really supposed to understand, as far as I'm aware, we're um, as far as I understand it, we're not really supposed to understand the context of the riddles, but they, they, they sort of help us understand the lore a little bit. So there'll be a character like, um, like who is Madom, uh, king of uh, Anne? Or what did he do? Or it's a, some sort of story element that will help us, um, help us understand the book and help the characters in some way. So it's sort of like life lessons. I'm not sure if I've described that correctly. I've I've seen on Reddit that some people are, were confused about that when I was reading this book. Um, so this riddle game happens, and we find that Morgan has taken a crown from the the ghost of uh the ghost I should say of uh, Pevin or Peven in this tower, which is it's all after the fact. We're not entirely sure when that really took place. Um, and so there's a, the King Madom uh, that I mentioned from the Kingdom of Anne or the region of Anne. Has promised his daughter Raiderly, or, or yes, I, 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 most pretty much throughout the entire book, I said Raiderly. Um, that's how I pronounced it anyway. I'm sure, it's wrong. Um, Mavon promised the person who uh, took the crown from Pe uh, Pevin or Peven, uh, Raiderly's hand in marriage, I suppose, and that's how things begin. So Morgan leaves Head, and uh, to to go to. Mavon's kingdom, and that's where we, that's where things become interesting. We are, uh, we see the the riddle masters of Kaith Nard. We see where um, not only Morgan studied, but Rude and all his friends as well. And I quite liked it because it's not. I can feel it does feel a little bit why when I say wizards and riddles in the magic school. But there's something about it that I quite enjoyed. There's the black robes of the, the Riddle Masters. We have people like Ohm, uh, who's a fairly important character in the book. Um, if you've read the book, you'll understand why I laughed there. Um, but yes, so we so we 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 leave the, the Shire, basically, of Head, and we go out into the wide world. I forgot one major character. Um, before Morgan leaves Head, he meets a character called Death, D-E-T-H, who is supposedly, apparently, the, the High One's harpist. We're not quite sure what that means, we just know that um, Death is the High One's harpist and he's very skilled at playing music. He's, he's this grey-haired figure with, um, I believe it's some purple and silver clothes. Is it, um, really quite, he reminds me of, uh, for anyone that is aware of Warcraft characters, he, he reminded me quite a lot of Khadgar. 
he's, he, he's described as looking like a grey-haired sort of um, wise man, I suppose, with sort of blue silver cloth. So death accompanies uh, Morgan on his journey out of head. Um, and something happens after uh, well they, they take a ship, let's just say they take a ship to reach Mavom in his kingdom of Anne. And that's where the story happens. That's where that's where everything. That's the, that's really the inciting incident. So I'll say before I get into the other details, um, the central conceit of the the book, the books, as I should say, is who is the high one? Does he exist? What is the land rule? Um, there are magical artifacts. For example, the an iconography, the stars, the three stars on Morgan's head, for example. There's a magical harp. There are, uh, there's a magical sword as well. There are shape changers. There are earth masters who may or may not be linked with the high one and may or may not be linked with the shape changers. I found this book is very interesting. It's, it constantly, um, it does not hold your hand. It certainly doesn't have that YA feeling that I thought it would. And I get, again, it's not why it isn't really my thing. I've never read why I don't really understand why it's a genre. Um, I just never even even when I was a teenager or whatever or even younger, I didn't read why just I didn't I just read books that I knew I just read books. And the book the book doesn't hold your hand. It's surprisingly complex. There's a lot of detail here. There's a lot of little bits of strands of lore, various kingdoms, of course, as you would, as you would expect in fantasy. Uh, little little fragments of lore, various kingdoms, little riddles that inform what the story is about. Um, however, I, I found that that was quite difficult to parse at, at times, uh, especially later on in the story. I mean, you're not really told who certain characters are. The shape changers, for example, are left very obscure, even until maybe the end of the last, second last book or the last book, or roughly the start of the last book, um, which is fine. Um, I just felt like it could have been a little bit more concrete in some elements, especially because this, this book deals with a lot of, it's all about lineage and descent, and we're not entirely sure, for example, who Raiderly, uh, the, that's the daughter of King Mavon, Mavon of Anne, who is, bet who is uh, betrothed to Morgan of Head. We're not entirely sure about her lineage and how she may or may not be uh, descended from a, a, a pig-haired, uh, from hell. Again, some of the, I guess some of the names are fairly unfortunate. Death and Hell, that's H-E-L and D-E-F-D-E-T-H -E -D -D -E for death. So some of the names are a little bit off. Although I would, I would say that I really quite, I know, I, I realise I'm changing from uh, topic to topic, but um, I really did enjoy the um, the names Duak, Madom, um, Morgan itself is a decent name. Har, the rustic Har that that can turn into a, a wolf or a Vesta, a, a, t a type of unicorn. Uh, Danan Isig, which is fairly Celtic. Um, a mountain man who can shapeshift into a tree, experience perfect stillness. Names like that. There's also a name um, that I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce. I just pronounced it um, Gestesvichlom. It's, a f it's meant to be a fairly... I'll actually try and read it. I'll try and pr spell it out here. G-H-I-S-T-E-S-L-W-C-H-L-O-H-M. Uh, who ends up being a fairly important character, let's say that. So yes, there are there are very quite evocative names. Even uh, Caithnard, Lungold, Osterlund, Eire, um names like that. Quite enjoyed them. So again, we're trying to figure out who the high one is, and we we covered the length and breadth of uh, of the of the land, I suppose. Actually, I was, the reason I paused there is I don't believe that uh, there's a a concrete name for the for the world or this region, so I, I had to I had to remind myself of that just now. Uh, and we meet, along the way we, we encounter strange objects. We uh, encounter the wind tower. We encounter a strange rainbow color rainbow colored cities. Or 
And so, uh, of course, we eventually reach the the top of the map, going from Head to all the way to the Northern Wastes, Grim Mountain, uh, Osterland, and at the very end, we reach Erlen Star Mountain, and we get some fairly uh, con concrete answers as to who the High One might be. Really, quite a good ending for Book One. Um, book Two takes takes place. Uh, not from Morgan's perspective, but from uh, Riddley's perspective, the uh, daughter of King Mavon of Anne. And she enlists uh, a crew to um, try and find Morgan. Uh, it's quite a nice ship journey, I suppose. Um, although I did find this this book... The, I should say these books are very short, by the way. Uh, you probably guessed that already from the, uh, from the fact that it's only about 544 pages. Um... And it's a trilogy. So I did. I did find, however, that in book two, there's quite a lot of backtracking. There's quite a lot of sort of circular um, travel. So we'll go from Anne, which is uh, Riddle Kingdom, to all the way up to Ireland Star Mountain, and we'll come back again. We'll just revisit various places, which I guess is fine. It gives you a. I guess it instills stronger imagery every time you re every time you revisit places i suppose it um makes you more familiar with with these different kingdoms and areas uh book two wasn't really my favorite again it, i guess since it's sandwiched in between one and three it's more of an interlude i suppose um and three of course is the climactic book where everything sort of comes to a head this book really sub subverted my expectations in multiple ways um started off being utterly uh, confused about what's going on and uh, gradually we learn that the High One is perhaps not who he, he appears to be and uh, of course perhaps he, um, Morgan is not who he appears to be either and there is actually quite a grand conflict going on not just for, um, not just conflicts in the Kingdom of Anne and uh, Head and Rune and Emiris for example but uh, perhaps even from the sea, perhaps uh, de um, dealing with entities that are thousands of years old. There's even sections where uh, characters tap into the power of the land and um, use that to help them in their conflict. Of course, I'm keeping a lot of this vague, but uh, let's just say it definitely widens out in scope. So I think for me, the biggest con is that I think there's just too much in the book for 540-ish pages. There's actually a surprising amount of elements, a lot of names. I actually found this almost challenging to read in the sense that it really does not hold your hand. It's quite impressive in that way though. Um, and the, the magical elements didn't quite add up. There's, I can't really go into spoilers, but the, the small issues with the magic, for example, how does the great shout and all these different magical shouts co um, connect with the, the controlling of the land, and how does that connect with playing a harp? Even now, reading it, and even even after finishing all three books, it's not entirely clear. Um, and uh, I, th I think for my prose, the, the the biggest pro is the lyrical prose. Um, and the fact that the characters are all quite likeable as well. Um, and it's a fairly small map as well, so it really does, over 544 pages, you, you really do get um, a good sense of the world. And so just to keep this brief, I think um, I will probably leave it there as more of an impression. Uh, hopefully that's given you some idea of the scope of the book and maybe some of its pros and cons. I definitely think it's worth a read. So I'll... Uh, Read some excerpts here. I've got these on my screen, as opposed to the I can't quite find them in the in the book. But uh, a really, really quite lyrical prose. I've read um, another book by Patricia McKillop, um, The Forgotten Beasts of Eld, which I quite enjoyed in some respects. Um, I might cover it. I think it's a little bit too. Um, it's not really my sort of thing. It's it's quite YA, more so than the Rudo Master trilogy. But she's known for having quite lyrical prose. For example, Death smiled, surprised. Yes. He traced a line of carving, 
and something in his face opened unexpectedly. I made it when I was young. By my standards, after years of playing on various harps, I shaped its pieces out of emirous oak beside night fires in far lonely places, where I heard no man's voice but my own. I carved on each piece the shapes of leaves, flowers, birds I saw in my wanderings. In Anne, I searched three months for strings for it. I found them finally, sold my horse for them. They were strung to the broken harp of Ustin of Aum, who died of sorrow over the conquering of Aum. Its strings were tuned to his sorrow, and its wounds was split, and its wood was split like, a, like his heart. Really quite impressive writing, actually. Another one. The Vesta faded, a, a kind of unicorn-type creature. The Vesta faded, and a man stood in its place. He was tall, lithe, white-haired, half-naked in the snow. His eyes in his lean, lined face were ice blue. His hands reaching down to Morgan were scarred with the white imprint of Vesta horns. Morgan whispered, Har. A little smile flared like a flame behind the light eyes. The Wolf King slid a powerful arm under Morgan's arm, lifted him to his feet. The light glittering eyes were unmoved, unwavering on his face. Five riddles, Har said, coin for the man who has nothing. Who is a star bearer, and what will he loose at his bound? What will one star call out of silence, one star out of darkness? and one star out of death. Who will come in the time's ending, and what will he bring? Who will sound the earth's harp, silent since the beginning? Who will bear stars of fire and ice to the ending of the age? So of course that gives a sense of um, the grand scope of the book. Lastly, um, a passage uh, about Danan Isig. Danan said, his voice measured to the unhurried rhythm of the silence, when you have a moment, practice so you can fade in a thought from man to tree. Sometimes I forget to change back. I watch the mountains fade into twilight and the stars push through the darkness like jewels pushing through stone and forget myself until Bear, Bear is his son, uh, comes calling for me. Or I hear the movements of Isaac, the mountain Isaac, whom he's named after. Uh, the movements of Isaac beneath me and I remember who I am. It's a restful, comfortable thing to be. When I'm, t when I'm too tired to live any longer, I will walk as far as I can up Isaac, then stop and become a tree. If this path you take becomes unbearable, you can simply disappear for a while, and no wizard or shape changer on earth will find you until you are ready. So I think I'll leave it there. The last passage reminds me of, uh, I didn't actually talk about the wizards of Lungold and all these various other elements, but... Uh, a trilogy so that this caused quite a lot to unpack. I'll definitely um, say that Patricia McKillop's Riddle Master is definitely worth the read. It's quite, it's quite, um, it's not as well known as it probably should be. It's actually her first work. I think she wrote it when she was about 25 maybe, which is impressive. Older than, younger than me. Um, so yes, definitely, definitely enjoyed the book. Um, I'm not sure what I'll cover next, but uh, it might be my next uh, book that I'm actually reading currently, which is uh, Doorway to Dilemma, which is part of the British Tales of the Weird series. A couple of short stories of the uh, dark fantasy. So hopefully you enjoyed that review. Till next time. Thanks. <laughs>